about him jumping the car. I'm Cass, nice to meet you Howard. Hi, you're right. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Are you feeling nervous? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm looking for so I'm looking forward to it. I'm quite excited that we're gonna be, you know, finally I get to do my first lesson. Yeah. So oh. I got my provisional through uh, last week. So oh, uh, um, excellent. You checked you checked all that outside, didn't you? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I checked your provisional and we're going to do just a quick eyesight test. Yeah. So if you could read for me the number plate of the VW in front. Okay, that's a bit too far for me. Is that... Do you have glasses normally? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's that's the recommended out of, out of roll now. That is the recommended distance, isn't it? It's about well, four car that, lengths, that's, isn't that's it? quite a long One, way. One, two, three, four. Well, that that van that's yeah. about forty meters. <laughs> yeah, right, maybe it's a bit too far. <laughs> so we'll go uh, actually with... just out, while we're out of roll there. What yeah. I would do, I'd do that outside the car. Right. Get their license. Do that. And what I would do is get them to read a number plate the furthest they can. Okay. And then. And then what, what I do, just to make it a bit more interesting, to sort of say, well, how far do you think that is? Let's be 40 metres, yeah. 30 metres. And then say, right, so good, that's about, you know, what would you say that is in distance? And they were like, I don't know, you know, some guess. So they, well, I'm kind of getting a feel on what they're like on okay. space and distances. Yeah, that's a good way and to so do it. And so then they could read that. And then I'd say, right, do you know what the legal requirement is? And they'd be like, oh, they probably wouldn't, would they? No. So I'd say, well, it's 20 and a half metres. So let's walk up to that van and you say when you think you're about 20 and a half metres, because they've already read it at this point now, haven't they? Yeah. So they'd, I'd walk them up and, the, and they'd, they'd get to, and they might get it wrong or might say, well, actually, we'd go a bit nearer, mm -hmm. so 20 metres, 20 and a half metres. And then they'd be like, oh, right, now I'll read that really clearly. So hopefully, hopefully they can. Yeah. Um, and then I would just sort of say to them, so yeah, just remember that because that distance, that's the, the legal requirement. So as you get older, you know, your, your eyesight might deteriorate with age. Yeah. You might one day need glasses to drive with. So just be aware that when you can't read a number plate at this distance, about five car lengths, then you know, get your eyesight checked. Because it is your responsibility. So you've got a lifetime of driving. I mean, that really promotes the yep. driving for life, for life rather than just okay. for your just for quickly old, just doing it yeah little old test. okay so, so that's um, good. so yeah so that that is probably too far now that, that is over 40 minutes and i would struggle ap yeah, i've yeah. got really good eyes <laughs> so i would need to i i obviously i can read a number plate at, i think when when i last said it's about 30 and a bit 32 meters when we yeah we actually measured the furthest point I could see, and obviously the, my, the requirement to be a driving instructor is different to the learners. Yeah. Right? So, um, so I'm well within that, but I'd struggle with that. That must be 40 plus. I was going. I suppose I was looking quiet. at car lengths, but I suppose I'm going because you think about it, if you do your one one pace, isn't it? Kind of walking, roughly. That does seem more. Like, <laughs> well, definitely well, more than 20. <laughs> well, well, there's a learning need there. So let's do it. Let's get out and okay, do it properly. <laughs> Let's just do that. Okay. So Eyesight done. good. Eyesight is good. <laughs> Not as good as yours though. <laughs> Eyesight is good. License been checked. Yeah. Okay, so what we'll do now is We'll have a little drive. I'll drive it to somewhere we can start off. I'll yeah. have a little chat along the way and just kind of gauge how much driving experience you've had and uh, we'll have a little bit of a chat. And then when we get to a location, which is going to be good, we'll go through some more of the talking through all the moving off and stopping and then we'll get you started. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me, yeah. yeah. Quite excited, yeah. All right, excellent. Well, right, let's get going then. This is clutch down, isn't it? And then clutch up. <laughs> I can never clutch further down and then start it up. Right. I wonder if my car's going to uh, have this. Oh, I should put my seatbelt on. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, seatbelt on. So 
have you had much experience driving? Have you had any lessons with your mum and dad? No, 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 no. No, no. no, they said um, leave it to the professionals. I don't think they've got, if you, you haven't met my mum and dad, I think they would lack on patience. Right, okay. It is quite a common theme that you get with some students preferring not to have their mum and dad teach them or vice yeah. versa. I think my mum would panic and to be sort of shouty at me. Right. And I think my dad would be just really strict. Oh. So, yeah. Okay, well that's good. It means that we get to have a bit of fun anyway with our, with our lessons. You've got pedals here. Oh, we have, so please just keep your feet under oh, there. Yeah, so I've got careful. my foot, foot, foot cool on it. Yeah, so. well noticed. <laughs> yeah, so just make sure you keep your feet underneath those and don't touch them. Oh, so that, the, they're yours for you to slide Yeah, so when me down. we start on our lessons, what, I can basically help you. Next with, left. Oh, this one here. Um, oh, yeah, from here to the I can help you with any problems which you've got going. I can support you. Um, and it's good for also giving demonstrations. So, you happy with the route? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's just next left now, isn't it? And then up to the end. Yeah, well, I put a nice day for it, haven't I? Yeah, so... so this is not raining. Exactly, and it does make a difference to your driving. So, what do you think we need to, you know, consider if it was a rainy day? Well, whatever I was driving, that, um, that I'd need to know where the window went as well. Yeah. yeah, and also the road surface area. If it's wet, it could I'd be, be a bit slippery. more slippery. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's the same as well when you're driving. Also, you have to think about when it is sunny weather, things like popping knees down. So, what we do, we make sure you're oh, comfortable yeah. before we start off because yeah. we don't want you being blinded. No. Um, Are you allowed to wear sunglasses for, uh, for the driving lessons? Yes. Well, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so before we chatted about this before, you are allowed to wear sunglasses. Like, yeah, you're allowed to wear sunglasses. Right, okay. it's, yeah. it's better that you're... Because I've got prescription sunglasses. I just, oh, okay. I didn't wear them today. I just thought, I wondered if I'd be allowed to. I think my dad said you wouldn't be allowed to. You're on a driving test or something like that. You are allowed to, but what you'd need to do is when you're on your test and when you're with me, you're going to have to make it more obvious that you are making your mirror checks. Oh, I see. So for example, you know, I'd need to see your head moving. Whereas if you were and you could probably just glance um, and I'd be able to see that, oh, it might be a bit more difficult for oh, me to see. Yeah. And I just need to make sure that you're making those mirror checks. It's quite important, isn't it? It's very important. All right, yeah. So, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pull up on the left here. All right, yeah. We've reached our destination. Brilliant. And we'll just secure the car. And then we'll have a little chat. Go from there. Okay? Yeah, lovely. Right. So, did you want to swap seats? Because I think what we're going to do now, we're going to talk about all the controls. We're going right, to yeah. show you where everything is to get going. So, I think it's going to be a bit easier if you're this side of the car. What do you think? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. then. Okay. Just when we, I know you're getting out that side, but just also I'm going to mention it now just because I'm getting out this side. When you do exit the car, just make sure you are looking over your shoulder. Yeah. You might have a bike or something coming across oh, your oh, way, yeah. so just make sure that you check behind you as well when you're leaving the car. All right. All right. Seat back. <laughs> Sorry? I've got to put the seat back. Um, you'd like to just pop the seat back for me. Um, so, what we do, just lift the lever up underneath. That's it. So, it's just underneath you here on, the, on the, this side, just underneath you there. Oh. Just pull that up and then push your legs back. Nice that's it. In my mum's car, it's like a little bar under there. It's yeah, different. they're different in a lot of cars, to be honest. Well, I sit back, go back here. Yeah. I'm going to start it off from there because that way we're going to make sure you know how to get your seat in the right position. Oh, I see. So. Right. 
So we'll go through all the controls. Mainly because I know, like you said, you know where bits and pieces are in your mum's car, but all cars are different. And yeah, she's got a, like one of them Fiestas, like that one over. Oh, that's a oh, yeah, a bit like that. Yeah, so you could find that you know things are in different places. So it's always good if you get into a new car that you know if you're driving your friend's car, you decide that after these lessons you pass your test, you're going to drive in your mum's car. It's always good every time you get in there just to make sure you do these checks so you know where everything is. Because if you're on the oh, move yeah. and all of a sudden you need to do so, you don't know where it is. What could happen? What? Well, uh, yeah, I wouldn't know where it is, so I might. You might end up yeah, getting a bit flustered, and then how to take where things are yeah. yeah exactly so always good to know before you start driving wouldn't you say yeah yeah okay so what we'll do is we've got some bits of paper here we can look at to guide us along the way so have you heard of the cockpit drill uh, i imagine oh, yeah that you would sort out your yeah. Your cockpit. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the kind of your cockpit, isn't it? What you're sitting like in now. Your mirrors and these things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, right, yeah. So what we'll do, we'll just go, I'm going to go through it with you quickly now. So the checks which you want to do when you get in the car is you want to make sure, first of all, that your door is closed properly. So just go on, just do that. Is it rattling? Is it? Does it feel secure? No, it's shut. It's shut. Excellent. That's how we want to keep it. Okay, and with your seat, what we want you to do is, I'm going to show you on this side. It's how we just pulled it back, so you... Oh, yeah, on this thing? Yeah. So you pull yourself forward yeah. on it until... Right. Now, if you were to put your foot on this pedal here, the pedal which is closest to me... Sorry, your left foot. Oh, the foot. other one? Yep. Yeah. Do you feel like you're a little bit close to that? Do you feel like you haven't really got enough room? Yeah. Yeah? It's, so what it's would... sort of banging into some of these... Yes. Yeah, so into the steering wheel. How we want it is that you can put your foot to that the was my floor. Mate. <laughs> he's on driving lessons he's as well. He's lessons as well. How he many has he had? I, mean, I think he's done about. He's a bit older than me. He started probably about three months ago. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Good. Um, so yeah, what you want to be able to do is get your foot all the way to the floor, and you want to be still have a comfortable bend in your knee when you do that. So I'd say oh. you're kind of sitting like that. So let's pull that back a little bit. A bend in the so let's knee. try it's a comfortable bend still in your knee but still about to get that all the way to the floor would you say that feels a bit better um i don't know how it should be but yeah like that yeah i'd say you're about right there all oh, right okay yeah okay. okay excellent so next we're going to check your seat um sorry the headrest on the back of your seat so where we want it to have it is in between you want the main bit of it in between yeah. your eye and your ear. Do you, do you know the reason why you want it there? Can you guess what might happen if it's maybe too low or too high? Just so it's comfy. So you wouldn't want it too low because you'd be like, and they just say so it's more comfortable. But it also protects your head. Oh, okay. So if you had it a bit too low and say you had to break suddenly yeah. and it's a bit too low, when you, your head comes forward or back, you want it to be able to protect your head there because okay. if it's too low your head might it might hurt your neck Is and if it's like too whip, high up um, whiplash yeah. So. yeah my auntie got that mm. so whip we... cash she called it <laughs> yeah because <laughs> she got paid <laughs> yeah. all right is that is that that that's what they're on about is it when you hit your neck yeah so you want to protect your neck so that the best so if that's in the right place is going to give you the maximum protection that it can offer oh, okay. okay so just like what the, the in the middle of the edge, like that. Yeah, so you want okay. that bit there. So I'd say that's about right. Yeah. That. Cool. So next we want seatbelt. So if oh, you yeah. could pop your seatbelt on for oh. me. Make sure there's no twists in the seatbelt as you pop it on so it's nice and smooth across here. Yeah. And a quick question. So if you have got you pass your test, you've got your thirteen year old little brother or sister in the back of the car, you're taking them to school. Whose responsibility is it to make sure they're wearing a seatbelt? Driver. 
on its head. Is that right? Yeah, that is. Anyone under the age of 14, you need to make sure they have got the proper restraints on. So whether it's a child seat or whether it's a seat belt, you need to make sure you're oh. in charge. Okay, if they're under 14 years old, you need to make sure that they're wearing the correct restraint. So if they're over that age, then what? They're, they're I would still. Well, I would still personally, if I get in the car, I make sure everyone's got a seatbelt on. All right, yeah. Yeah, because I feel like I'm driving, I want to make sure everyone's safe. So I would say, has everyone got their belts on before I kind of move off? Oh, yeah. And then that way, I, I know for certain. Okay. Um, but if they're under 14, you need to definitely make sure you've asked that question, belts on. Okay. So let's move on to mirrors. So. About this one? So what this one's we only touch them on the outside, so make sure you don't touch them on the actual oh, no. glass right, itself. No. What we're gonna do, we'll start off with these side ones. Do you know what we use these for? Looking down the sides. Yeah, so what could you see behind? What can you use them to see at the moment? I'd see the most of the footpath. I'd see that junction. Yeah. Just the point. And then this way to see down the road, see the footpath on the other side. Yeah. And uh, then kids walking would to you, school. Would you say your view is similar pretty much on to what you can see through these? You've got a little bit of the car you can see and then as you said you've had to see the pavement so that's good on that side. Can you see the road on that side as well as just a little bit of the car? I can see more car in this one and less in that one. Okay. So well, um, what we can do. How much car? So what we can do now we'll show you how to change them. This is like, yeah, my, my, my mum's... Yeah, so these are... I've had a little fiddle, she yeah. won't let me drive, but you know, it's like, <laughs> I've had a little play. They do, they're different on, on a lot of cars, to be honest, so once so again, this ain't thing. good to check. So, oh, yeah, yeah oh, if yeah, you no, move it, it, you're going to be able to see. So if you make it so you can see a little bit of the body of the car, but you can see behind you, much vision as possible. I see a bit of car, yeah. 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 Can you see the road behind you? So, for example, that car coming up, can you see that car behind you? Yeah. Well, I did. It's gone, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, if we and go I, yeah, on this oh, side. That so, I can see a bit of car in that one as well. And you can still see all the pavement. And you can see if something, say, for example, a cyclist was going to come up. We're a little bit further out. Imagine the cyclist is going to come up by the side of the car. We need bad to see them, and we need to also bad to see just if anything, anything yeah. happening on the pavement. Can you see both? Yeah, yeah. I, what I don't understand is why, why do I need to see the car? That's, that's a waste of mirror, isn't it? <laughs> and I don't know. I'll, maybe it's a serious silly question. I don't know. Well, it's. Um, I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay. We'll come back to that one. <laughs> um, can you tell me? Can you come out of roll? Yeah, that's just, yeah, okay, so um, out roll briefly. Yeah. So if I didn't see it, it's to have some kind of perspective. Of the... What I would... That I mean, that's the short answer. If I can't see the side of the car, if it's the mirror's fetched out, well, how much am I missing? How much of a blind spot have I just created? Yeah. Whereas if I can see the car, there's no gap. Yeah. Okay. There's no gap in my... Vision. So you know, yeah. So it's all okay. joined up. The pictures join up. That yeah, that does it? make sense. So it's kind um, of what I was thinking. Do you know, like when they just uh, you'll get used to them, them frying out questions that you're not and expecting. Then you could illustrate in a picture. You could draw like a picture of a car, the, a triangle with the mirror fetched out on the side of the car down here. I know this isn't very because I'm trying to do so. Yeah, you know, I'm about I have car. actually think I've got a drawing somewhere with mirrors in here, which I can show. There we go. Yeah, so if I could borrow that, just yep. for a second, just so it's visual on that. This is what the mirror should look like, that green stripe down there with the car in it. Yeah. And then that triangle is the rear mirror. So there's a bit of overlap, isn't there? There's the rear mirror. Yeah. And so I could see objects in the rear mirror and the side mirror together, which I can. Yeah. So there's a bit of overlap. But if I had my mirror fetched out like that red one and looking out there, then this this area would be shaded red as the blind spot, and that's a yeah. big. I mean, you could. What could you fit in there? I mean, you could fit a big old bass in there. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, I didn't see that. Imagine that on a dual carriageway. If I'm looking out into the fields and there's something coming up on the left side or the right side, 
yeah. I wouldn't know. So, um, so it kind of get, having it down the side of the car coats this little overlap. Yep. So I can um, okay. see. So it, I don't lose anything. So yeah, full vision. So you've got a full range of sight for everything. And the other good way to describe, so bit of car, about a thumb's width of a car, half okay. road, half sky. Half road, half and, sky. And just while you're on it, in the, my little side pocket, Yep. If you there's a little photograph. Oh, okay. Hey. And, and in there, there's a little. So you can see what it should look like in this car. This That's is taken in idea. this car. So half road, half sky, bit of car. Bit of, and in this car, you see a bit of door handle. If you had a four door car, you might see a bit of. A, I don't know what you see. You have to take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and in the back, cool. the mirror frame. So what's quite good if, if you do need to talk about the convex and Flat, yeah, is that that little van there looks looks about six car lengths away, doesn't it? it looks quite a long way away, yeah. And here, look, look at how close he is, he looks half. That's a really good idea. So, it's, it's that's completely quite a good that. little, um, yeah, awesome. Little, and it saves a lot of words, and it? it's like, oh, yeah, that, yeah, because you don't want to be you know, you I, want, I do make, want to get moving. I with make style. it match my picture, yeah, which is quite easy, easy. easy. Okay, so, um, all right, so. Okay. Answer that question going back into role, people mode. So you want me to answer it, sorry? Well, if, if you're happy, yeah. I'm happy to move on. Oh, we'll um, move on. If, just because if you're, if you're happy with explaining we've, that. We've gone, we've gone over it, haven't we? So let's move good. on. Um, okay, and then we've got your internal mirror here. So this is the view which you want outside your mirror at the back there. What I tend to do is line it up. So you kind of, you have a bit of the top of the you can kind of fit it in almost into the window yeah yeah like frame it almost frame it yeah yeah i've done that i can see the top of the window where that camera is yep and i can see the window wipe at the bottom i can see a little bit of my headrest too excellent fantastic yeah okay so are you familiar with blind spots what we what, when we talk about blind spots what do we mean um, I imagine it's a well, a blind spot would be a, something you can't see. Yeah, so there's an area, there's good, at, at time, there's an area which you can't see. If we would get car come across in a minute, it would be a good example because what you can do, you can look in this mirror here, and then what you're going to see is the car getting closer, and then all of a sudden it's going to disappear out of your sight. And it's just a moment where the, the mirror can't capture it well, as it's coming past. There's, there's, there's see these two people here, and they're getting in their blue car. Ah, yes. That blue Volkswagen. Yep. I can't see that in that mirror or that mirror. Okay. So how do you think when we... I look ahead, I can't see it. I'd have to, I'd have to look over there. You're going to have to look over there. So one of the important things when we're kind of moving off and stopping is blind spots. So we're going to talk oh, about a little yeah. bit more about that. But just for us on the subject of mirrors, you know, it's a handy kind of one to talk about now. I suppose because they might be reversing out in a minute, aren't they? Yeah, oh, they're then, going indoors. They are oh, yeah. going indoors. They yeah. could We've got a blue van coming up. So look in your mirror there and just look for the blue van. So you, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? He, he vanished momentarily, yeah. Yeah, momentarily you can see it. So he was going quite fast. So he was, was going quite like, fast. It was like a nanosecond. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, I get it. If there was, if they, these people here were reversing out, and if I just, I wouldn't know. Yep. I wouldn't know they're there unless I looked over there. No, to be honest. Okay. So I've got one over it. Yep. Yep. Oh, so we're going to go through okay. this part of our observations. So we're going to go through those. We'll do that as okay. part of moving off. Next of all, though, before we start doing that, we need to talk about the controls. Okay. <laughs> so. So was that my cockpit drill? Done that. Yep. Yeah. So you finished the cockpit drill. So. It's a lot to remember. Isn't it? Well, there's a good way to remember it. Oh. So you can kind of break it down into D for doors, S for seat, S for steering, S for seat belt, M for mirrors. So D, S, D, triple S, M. So I did my seat, I did my seat belt. Have I done my steering? Have I, do I need to do anything? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I mean, I can reach it. Can you put your hands all the way around it, nice and lightly? Yeah. Yeah, so you still have a comfortable bend in your arms, so you're not like, Ugh. So that's, that looks yeah. okay. So, and is it the right height for you? It's not kind of too low, too high. It's not down here. It's not up here, is it? I can see all the dials. Yep. 
um, the, the steering wheel sort of matches the contour of the dashboard on this car. Yeah, that's all good. To me, it looks good. Right? Yeah, excellent. So we will move on next to the foot controls. So do you know what the three pedals are for? Yeah, yeah. I, they are, I did ask my mum. Okay. Was, so I didn't look at the complete idiot today. <laughs> so, so you've got the accelerator and the brake in the middle and then the clutch pedal. That's it. So what's an easy way to remember that? Can you think of one? Think of the alphabet? Or ABC. ABC. So that's a good way to remember it as well. Okay. Yep. ABC from your side. Working out to my side. Going that way. Be CBA. CBA. Yeah. Can't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be asked. <laughs> okay. okay oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry. With the we talk about the accelerator first. Do you know what it does? The accelerator. Mm -hmm. Um. It's the go pedal. It's it? the go pedal. So oh. quite often it's referred to as a gas pedal as well. So sometimes oh, okay. during the lesson you might hear me saying gas on, gas off. A little bit more gas, a little bit less gas. Okay. Um, and gas. That's, that's yeah. like Americans, isn't it? Gas. Yeah, it yeah. can be. Oh, yeah. But it just helps with accelerating. It's it's kind of a quicker word, really. So yeah. when we're talking about yeah. it, you know, it's just less a bit syllables. easier for, for us to kind of communicate it. Oh, when we can't because we're going through quite a lot of stuff it's just a little bit easier yes. okay and which foot would you use to operate the gas the right yeah lovely and when we're driving along basically what you want to be doing when we're moving off is a light bit of pressure obviously if we're going as we increase speed a little bit more i know i guess that when we start off you're not just going to put your foot down <laughs> but yeah you never know, so it's always good just to mention it. So All next right. one, next along, what have we got? Brake. Yep, so what does the brake do? Stop. It slows and stops the car, I'd say, because we use it for slowing down as well. Okay, yeah. And Makes which sense. foot would you use for the foot brake? Well, it's easy, couldn't you? Well, with the, the middle. Foot, well, you you might think that but it's not quite the case because you'll find that when we get to the next one well i suppose the left then well if you're going to be braking would you need to put your left foot on the gas would you be accelerating or braking at the same time do you think no probably not no no, no. Oh, right, so, so really if you're not going to be using then. that if you're not going to be using your left foot for acceler uh, accelerating sorry if you're not going to be using your right foot for accelerating you oh, could I be see. using it for braking, couldn't you? Sorry. So that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Because then also there's a train coming. Yeah. Are <laughs> we near a level crossing? <laughs> <laughs> because when we come to our next one, which is the clutch. Oh, then two, that would be the left foot. That would be the left foot. I'm guessing. Is that a lucky guess? That is a lucky guess. <laughs> a so, do you know what the right, clutch does? The right one. Yeah. Um, well, what does it do? No, not really. Um, so, I, all, I, what I do know is is that in my mum's car, it's got a clutch. She's got gears, manual. I want to learn manual. But my dad, he's got an automatic. And he, I noticed because I thought I did another stupid question. I asked him, I said, Why have you only got two pedals now? And he was like, Door. This is why I don't want him to teach me because he'll take the mic out of me. And um, yeah, he has just two pedals. So mm -hmm. I'm figuring the clutch is something to do with the gears. Yeah, but I didn't that's want to right. Because he'll just take the mic. Well, so. I actually think it's a really good question. I think you know, oh, you okay. don't ask, you don't know, do you? Well, so. no, I didn't. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. So I, the clutch connects. Let's, let's see, I've got here. I've got a little bit of a picture going on here. Okay. So, can you see these? Let me move this over. So, you've got your engine here, and you've yeah. got your gearbox here. Okay. Yeah, so when the pedal, when you push that clutch down, what it does, it disconnects it. Okay? Well, so, it's like these two. The down. Yeah, it disconnects it. All right. And that enables you then to change your gear. Right? Okay. When you come back up, put the pedal back up, what it does is it puts them back together. So, with so it's kind of moving like that pedal down they come apart clutch up and they come back together clutch up back together clutch yeah. down and apart yeah okay and then so what so we're going to be doing engine, what's the other one so engine one is gearbox. the gearbox yeah right okay 
so what we're going to be doing so have you heard of biting point stalling you know you've got your friend who's doing his driver lesson so they spoke I to you about I know I stalled in this yeah I know what a bite is do you know what happens when someone stalls do you know do you know what causes it really? well I, I, I know they're driving a manual because they're they're messing up their gears or something they put it in the wrong gear I Basically, or, what I don't know. They're not very good at. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, a lot yeah. of what we what you need to do when what we're doing is when we're finding the bike point when we're changing gear. What we do is we're pushing the clutch down, and then what we do we're coming back up and we're putting a bit on the gas. So we're doing a seesaw feat. Okay. Probably best to give you a bit of an example, really. See, so what? So as my clutch is coming up, my gas is going down. Yeah. So your clutch comes up and you put a little bit of gas. Does on. it go the other way? Like, so when I'm putting my clutch down, my gas is coming up. So yeah, normally. Yeah, I'm not really explaining this very well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wanna? Yeah. Should we? Just, could, should we start up? Yeah. Let's hour? scrap that. Let's scrap that. Okay. So. We'll just carry on with so, the clutch. Well, did you want me to offer an explanation? Yes. What I do. Lots of different instructors will do lots of different things. Some have little mechanical clutches that work that you can show. Right. Cost about 100 quid. Don't need that. <laughs> Don't need that. No. Um, I, I just use my hands and have some cards which I demonstrate. Okay. So imagine, you know, you can let me know if you think that this would make sense if you just didn't know what a clutch did. Okay. And I would actually, you know, you just sort of hit a wall there where you said, I want to show you now. Yeah. But you're sat there. Yeah. You have got but a still... clutch. But you, on that drive to the location, mm -hmm. you could use that as a clutch demo. Yeah. That'd be a better option. So what I would do differently there, you know, like imagine the start of the lesson. Mm -hmm. Eyesight, check license check good you're jumping in there all oh, mates face got your seat well <laughs> <laughs> it's your door shut <laughs> yeah great and also there's some pedals down there yeah better let you know about them because they're the pedals that i use when i'm teaching to help you if you need help yeah so i've got a brake and a clutch down there but don't press them do not press them so um so i'd have that little conversation then i'd say right so we're going to take you away from your house because I think you said outside you're a little bit embarrassed. They're all watching you, mm -hmm. taking the mickey in there. They all said you're going to stall, didn't they? You ain't going to stall today. So, um, so we get you away, and I'll show you some things that we'll be doing today. Because the big thing is, because you've chosen to learn to drive in a manual car. I mean, why why did you ch choose? manual i mean i'm grateful but why manual why not automatic what what is why what what's your cho decision all oh, my friends are learning manual yeah so i want to learn manual <laughs> and you know it's, there's more there's a little bit more skill in it and you'll have a lot more choices and options when you go buy a car mm -hmm. and you know what when you pass your test in a manual you'll be able to drive automatic as well anyway yeah but if you took your test in an automatic would you be allowed to drive a manual oh. No. So you're going to get like the full license. You're going to get, you know, you can drive all B category cars. That'd be good. So um, anyway, so this clutch, this will be sort of the big talking point of what we're going to do today. So while I've, while I'm going to drive you to the location, let's talk about what I'm doing with the clutch. And I'll just give you a little explanation of what it what it is, what it does, and then we'll get showing you. So. Let's say we had a conversation outside the car that, oh yeah, you, well, I didn't know, whatever. So I'd say, right, so, I've kind of, I've kind of been halfway, I'm a bit, I don't know, I need to get back in the swing. Let me just see, all right, so let me ask you, what pedals have we got down there? So let's say, most people would say, oh yeah, it's a gas, accelerator, brake, clutch, like I yeah. did, good. And I would just ask, okay, so what, what does the accelerator do? go yeah lovely what does the brake do stop it good do you know what the clutch does oh not sure okay so now i can explain what that does 
So basically you need the clutch to change gears. And if you imagine the clutch pedal separates two cogs and one cog's joined to the engine. So when the engine's t running, mm -hmm. this cog's turning. And what to make the car move, we'd need to connect it to something joined to the wheels, wouldn't we? Because the engine would then connect to the wheels and make the car move. Yeah. So that's essentially what we're doing. We're just joining up the engine to the wheels with the clutch. So when I put, if I put the clutch down, I separate these plates, and when I bring the clutch up, they come back together. Okay. Happy days. Um, so if I if I do that, I'm going to start the engine now, and just as a precaution, and this is something that's best practice, something you'll always um, do before I start the engine. I'm just going to check the handbrakes on mm -hmm. and the gears in neutral. Because do you know what happened if I started the engine and it was like in a gear like that? Oh, you're going to latch forward. That would, that would, because it's in gear. The car, the engine, and the wheels are connected, so the engine's trying to turn to start up, and it will move. And if that wasn't on, it could. It could start and just sort of drive off up the road. If that's on, it was still. So we're, we're sort of got good precautions here to make sure that don't happen. So handbrake neutral. And this this car has a key. So yeah, I think your mum said she drives a Fiesta and it's a new one. So I'm, she'll have a button up here to start. Very Ooh, mod. So okay. we're, we've got the old fashioned key. Cars are changing all the time. So, um, so I put the key in, I turn the Handbrake neutral, turn the key for the ignition, and look, loads of warning lights come up. And one by one, they all go off. <laughs> and there's all oh, <laughs> the tyre pressure lights just come on. So I just new tyres fitted yesterday. I need to just reset that. I'm not going to waste your time doing that today because I'll have to get into the. I have to look at my little manual. Uh, okay. But I will do that. And um, so, yeah, so the, the warning lights that should have gone off have gone off. And then I'm going to start the engine. So this car needs to clutch down to start. If I don't, look, if I try and do that, turn the key, get a message. Yes. So I remind you, it won't start about it. So clutch down, starts. And now those warning lights all go off apart from the P, which is this parking brake. Okay. If someone didn't have a seatbelt on, I'd know about it. If you didn't shut your door properly, you'd know about it. Right, okay. So um, so yeah, so now the engine's started, let's just sort of show you what this clutch is doing. So the, the, the engine's turning and the plates are together because the clutch is up, but the car's not moving. There's something missing, a gear is missing. So let's imagine, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just get my visual aid, I've got a very good visual aid here. This is rather than a hundred pound clutch demonstrator, I just thought I'd use some cards. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, I think I'll be going your way. <laughs> let's imagine that these this car's got six gears, seven if you please reverse. So we've got mm -hmm. different gears. So they, imagine these are little cogs that make the car move. Yeah. Okay, so if I give you the gears, okay. okay, the top gear that you've got, or the first gear on the pile is gear one, let's say. Okay. So if I put the clutch down and separate these plates, we're going to put a gear in. So just put a gear in. It's like putting the, this filling into a sandwich. So now there's a gear. So if we do that, yeah, the gear's in. Now if we bring the plates together, they'll connect. So if you just listen, I'm just going to turn the fan down so you can listen. When when the plates come together and they connect to that gear, we call that the biting point because they are literally biting on that gear and you'll hear it. And when you're sat here, you'll feel it on your left foot. Your left foot, you'll feel a vibration. Okay. So I've turned it all down. So I just want you to tell me when you hear the note of the engine change and when you feel that vibration. And when you hear it, tell me to stop and I'll keep my left foot still. So you're just gonna listen now and tell me to stop when you hear it. Stop. Hear that? Yeah. It feels, feels different. If you've touched the dashboard, you feel, just touch the dashboard while I do it, you can feel, feel that. Yep. That's what I can feel basically through my left foot. I can feel it vibrates. It's just okay. like I can feel it. So, um, so when you drive, you use sort of all your senses. You use your hearing and your feelings, your feelings through the steering wheel and all sorts. So, um, so it make you sort of aware of how things feel and sound. So we get the bite point there. If I was to continue to bring that clutch up, the plates would continue to come together to connect. Mm -hmm. and the car would go forwards. But it won't. Got that one. 
but this is what's stopping us. Okay. So that's kind of the biting point. So if I take it out of gear with the clutch down, then I can bring the clutch up. Yep. Now we've lost the gear, they don't quite connect. The engine's still running and they just sort of miss because there's no middle cog. So imagine I was driving along and I'm in um, first gear. So there's first gear in there. The plates are together, connected. I'm accelerating so this plate moves fast and the car goes quicker. Mm -hmm. And if I lift off the gas pedal, the car kind of will it's called de accelerates and just sort of slows down. Like as if you was on a bike pedaling and stop pedaling, it kind of like just ease up a bit, wouldn't it? So we call that like de acceleration, engine braking. Um, and then if we want to go to second gear, which you've got your next card in the pile is second gear, how are you going to put second gear in there? What would you need to do? Oh, do the same as before, put, separate them. So I'm going to yeah. need to put the clutch down. So do you're it. going to come off your gas so this will stop spinning far. So you yeah. just come off the gas pedal and then you'd put the clutch down to separate now what are you gonna do put in my second gear but if we can put that in you've got to take that one out can not have two ah, gears of course yeah so, so take you, that one out you take that gear out gear one comes out and then gear two, two goes, goes in, in yeah and then we clutch what we up do. and when we bring the clutch up we're gonna do that fast or slow we're gonna do it slow slow slowly what would happen if you brought it up really quick like that Oh, you're going to squash, squash your, squash your filling. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would happen in a car? It's like a bouncing ball. So they get the. And the effect of when you're driving is like if ever you've seen a car kangarooing. Yeah. Jumping up the road. That's what they're doing. They're, they're bouncing oh. the clutch because they've just washed them together. So we're going to bring them up nice and slow and connect. Slow and. Clutch coming up is always slow. Clutch down can go quick, so always up slow. And that's kind of what we're gonna. That is like basically what you're gonna do a lot of today. Okay. And 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 you said you're outside. You're worried about stalling. Well, what would you say if I said you weren't gonna stall today, and you'd do be doing it on your own? You will not stall today. Well, that would make me very happy. Be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. And, and no kangarooing. All right, I'll try. So, well, well, we'll be a team. So our, our objective today is to get you moving off and stopping, driving, and, um, and using that clutch like really well. So if you can give me the cards back, I'm gonna put them away. Okay. Okay. And so now I'm just gonna show you kind of what I'm doing, I'll give you a demonstration of the clutch. So I'm gonna put the clutch down. Yep. I'm gonna select first gear. We'll talk more about gears and that later. So I'm just going to put it in first, and then my left foot's going to come and get that. What's that called? Biting point. So I've got the biting point. My right foot's just going to cover the gas. You can hear that. Yeah. I'm, when I get going, I just press that very gently. Okay. So I will talk properly about the whole. There's a little routine I'm going through now, but I'll save that when we get there. I just want you to focus on think about the clutch. Okay. So I've got my feet ready, the car's ready to go. I'm going to check all around and make sure it's safe because then people will get in, in their car and make sure no one's coming around me. So I'm checking all my mirrors and my blind spots. And if it's safe, I'm going to take the handbrake off, little warning light goes off, and the clutch is coming up slowly, 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 slowly. And now, look, now it's up. So it took a few seconds to fully release that. And now the clutch is fully engaged, I can press the gas pedal mm -hmm. and there's the acceleration. And if I de-accelerate, can you feel that? Yeah. The car's just, the engine's just compressing and slowing. But it won't stall. Okay. Got no one behind me. So I'm, I'm going dead slow here. We're just literally like at a walking place. I'm not pressing the gas. I'm not touching the clutch. The car is just ticking over, it's just running along. Okay. And if I just, I'm going to check my mirrors, make sure no one's trying to overtake before I accelerate. Now you can feel that going in. And I'm not pressing that hard at all. I'm literally pressing my gas pedal like a millimeter at a time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to check for it to be safe and then I'm going to put it up into second gear. So to do that, I'm going to come off my gas, the accelerate, clutch goes down, I select second gear. Notice where I look. Look at my eyes, I'm looking up the road and not the gear, second gear. Clutch yep. comes up, we're in second gear. Check mirrors, gas goes back on. Okay. And now, look, there's a little number on this dashboard. Got a number two, second gear. And if you, this time you can help me. If you have a look at that gear stick, look where gear three is. Yeah. 
is you're going to put it in gear three. You're not going to touch the pedals, I'm doing that. So I'm going to come okay. off the gas, I'm going to put the clutch down. You're going to put it in three. Yeah, is yeah, it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And I'm going to bring the clutch up and now we're in three. Right, okay. Happy days. And I'm going to go back down to two and you're going to be my little assistant. So I'm going to check mirrors and signal. I'm going to brake. I'm going to put my clutch down. You're going to put it in seconds. And I'm going to bring my clutch up. So now you're allowed to look at that gear stick because you're not driving. Yeah. And you'll be my assistant. But when you're driving, we're going to have to work out a way that you can get them gears without looking okay. at them. Because that would be a bad idea, wouldn't it? That, absolutely, down, yeah. If there was a, a car coming towards yeah, us. You might miss something. The next little thing I just want to show is a little bit about steering. So we're going to be turning left. Now I want to demonstrate two types of steering to you. Good steering and bad steering. So. We're I'm going to go left, so I'm just checking my mirror's signaling, signals are here. Okay. Now, because I'm turning left, look, my left hand's going to come up to the top. Okay. And then when I reach the corner, I'm going to pull down and push up with the other hand. And then when I straighten, I pull and I push. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what <laughs> they call that? Steering. Push and pull steering. No. It's pull and push, not push and pull. So we right. pull always we pull first. Okay. Pull first. There is a long answer to that, but short answer is, is smoother. We pull through the bend. Yep. It's more accurate. You, you, you'll feel more in control. One day when you when you're better at driving, we'll get you to try and push through bends, and you'll feel you'll feel it. It feels weird. Okay. So we kind of pull and then we push. So that's good steering because it means I'm in control. I'm going to show you some bad steering in a minute. But I'm not going to do it here because this, this car might pull out. And incidentally, the route that we're on is the route that you're going to be driving around soon. So you'll be coming down this road, so we'll be moving off, stopping and stuff. Okay. But I just want to show you a bit of steering because steering, it might look easy when you're sitting there, but when you're sitting here, it's it, it, it. Some people take to it naturally. Some people are like, not. it can be a bit weird. So, you know, we'll find out where you are. Right. So anyway, I'm going to be turning left at the end here. So I'm going to check my mirrors. I'm going to put my signal on. And bad steering. Look, I'm going to hold the wheel like that. And now I go over to there. And I look at my hands, how much I like to steer to get around that corner. That doesn't look comfortable. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you think I'm in good control? No, no, I don't think you are at all. So that's a fixed grip. And we don't, we don't want to do that. No. So it means I have to let go of my hands, let go of the steering wheel mid, mid bend to re grip. Yeah. Which letting go of the steering wheel on a bend is never a good idea. No. So, so that was a nice little demonstration of bad steering. And so, what method are you going to use today? Oh, I'm going to use that first method. And what is it called? It's called a pull and push. Push. You're pulling it round first and then you're pushing it. So at this junction I'm going to be turning left, so I'm going to do the good steering. So before I do all that, do I need to check my mirrors? Yes. And do I need to signal? Um, yes. So I'm mirror, signal. And now this time my left hand's coming up to the top to get a big pull, okay. ready to push. Now, now look at my hands compared. Yeah. That's in control, isn't it? If I needed to signal, sound my horn, Put the window wipes out of all got all my controls. Back to first. Get a bite. You hear that? Yep. And I'm gonna come round this way with the So I'm checking mirror. It's got a car behind, so I'm gonna signal and I'm just gonna pull it in. And now when I come to a stop, I just cover the brake like I'm doing my right foot, push the clutch down, then gently on the brakes, just very gently bring them in. Right, okay. So my gas pedal is very a gentle foot, my right foot just gently presses the gas, gently presses the brake. My left foot is a heavy foot that can go down quick but always up slow. So that kind of coordination is really what we're going to be looking at, is getting your hands and your feet kind of working together to control the car. I'm not too worried about the rules of the road apart from we drive on the left. Okay. But we're not giving you a lesson <laughs> on junctions today. We're giving you a lesson on getting the car moving and stopping. Um, 
and I'll be helping you throughout that. So I've got my dual controls. If like that situation, we've got someone close behind us, I would help you. I won't expect you to deal with that because you might panic, you might crush the brake pedal. Yeah. That, that could end badly. Okay. So I, in moments like that, I'll just help you out. Okay. Yeah, so I'll be I'll be the full support. Will you tell me that you're going to help me out though? Will you say, I'll, I'll, I'll do this bit for yeah. you? I will. I'll let you know exactly what's going on and how we're going to do it. Good. And we'll have agreement. So you might think, oh no, I'll do this. But if time's short, then I'll just jump in. Because, so, you know, if someone just jumps, I don't know, some cat just run out, I won't have time to say, look, do that. <laughs> I just, I, we won't I, have time to talk about it, will we? <laughs> I might just preserve the cat's life and just slow you down a bit. Okay. Don't like we're cats. not going to be going fast. So anyway, so that's, that's sort of the demonstration. This way you're going to have a go. So before I get out, and before you, I, I do the next bit, yeah? Yeah, just to, yeah, yeah. To, yeah to keep it going, bit. keep it going. <laughs> so right, so before we get out, um, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put my seat back so that when you want to get in, you, you've got a nice big area to get into, in case you've got longer legs than me or whatever. And um, so yeah, I've put the seat back and we're just going to briefly cover safety aspects of getting in and out of car. Now you've been a passenger in your mum and dad's car many times but there might be some things that you do routinely, there might be some things you're not aware of and because we're preparing you to be a, a safe driver for life, not just a pass test, there's some things there that, that might help and it will help your theory test as well. Okay. So some of this stuff will be in theory. So before you get out of the car if you're on passenger side, where would you like, normally look before you get out? Well, I normally look just behind me here. Very good. Just before, yeah. And why do you look over your shoulder? Just to make sure nothing's going to, I'm not going to hit anything with my car door. And you use the mirror as well? Yeah, sometimes. I kind of do a bit of both, I suppose. So, wouldn't it be easy just to check your mirror? But then I might not see something. Good. So what's that area, that something area called, you know? I think it's called a blind spot. So I, think, I think I might have mentioned it when I was Yeah, yeah, you did, yeah. So yeah, so good. You're aware of your blind spots, check into there. And um, have you opened a uh, car door windy day? Yes. And what, yeah. what could happen? Well, there? it blows back onto you. Yeah, or well, it could blow away and like rip your door. <laughs> extreme <laughs> situation so a good little technique just to sort of help with both of those things is something called a dutch reach you had a dutch reach <laughs> sounds, sounds wrong <laughs> I don't know why. but there is a thing called a dutch reach and do you know what they're in the rewrite of the highway code the thing about putting it in they mm -hmm. might rename it but in <laughs> holland surprise surprise um hence the name dutch reach Kids at an early age are taught when getting out of a car to use their opposite hand to reach there and do that, open the door like that. Oh, okay, yeah. So it forces them to twist to look oh. into their blind spot. And the other thing is, because there's a lot of cyclists in yep. Holland and we're getting more cyclists, so we're kind of, because there's been a few, you know. I can imagine. I think there's been fatalities where people have opened doors and taking out cyclists coming quite quick down in cycle lanes. Because imagine you're on the left, there's a cycle lane. Yeah. Getting out of a taxi, stuff like that. People aren't looking. I've been to Holland, just well. crossing the road is <laughs> hard enough. Right, there you go. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so if we twist like that, we've got both hands on the door. So if it is windy, we can catch the door. Mm -hmm. And it's better than that because we don't twist. And if the door blew, that's your, this arm's quite a, of a long tether that drag me out. Whereas this is short. Yeah, leash, you're holding it onto you know it. I mean. so, yeah. um, so it's a good little technique to use. So we'll get you to, to use that, best practice and all that. And um, and then we've got to swap over. So how would you do that? Would you go around the front of the car or are you going to go around the back? What would be the safest? If you could think, what is the safest way um, of going I think it would probably car? around the front of the car. You could do. You could do. Maybe around the back when, of the car. Well, let's go back. Yeah, well, like when you were a kid, they teach you to cross the road. Would they teach you to cross in between two park cars? No. Why is that? Because people might not be able to see you. Exactly. So cars coming up here, if you're sitting in front, in the road, can so they see you? They're to see you, no. Whereas where would they see you better? Yeah, so if you at the, at the back of the car, then they're going to see you as they're coming up the road. And would you stand behind the car or on the footpath? 
Well, it, you know, if I'm waiting for a car to pass, I'll wait on the footpath. Good. And then, you know, as the car's pass, then I'll get onto the road. So, so why, if it's busy, wait on the footpath? Because, you know, some idiot one day could Yeah, where well, they might want to pull in behind, they can't if I'm standing there. Yeah. Or might not see you. You know, they might have just had two bottles of vodka, might they? Mm. Or what, you know, you don't know, do you? So, yeah, so that is just best practice, safer to go around, do it that way. Yeah. And the seat's back, so you just jump in, left the key in. When you get in, don't don't like start out and try. <laughs> just let me get in. <laughs> so anyway, that that's that. So um, we're not going to do that because yeah, I need to be here, don't I? For the next bit. So yeah, our roll. That's that. So um, <laughs> that's so a much more um better way of doing it, isn't it? And that just is coming from experience of what on the first lesson. What do they need? Yeah. What do they really need is they can't steer. A lot of them can't steer. And you're... I've, I've sat in on lessons where it's like four to six hours on Saturday. I done a really big stint of lessons. I've done like six hours well or something with um, Andrew. Uh, but yeah, like even some of them are still not steering. I was like, this is a big eye opener because you'd think that it's going to be maybe the foot pedals might be the thing that they need to overcome but it's really not is it the steering is a big thing yeah and um so to coordinate the hands and the feet moving off the stop because with the nursery route we've picked is as close to off road as we can get we've made it as simple as we can mm -hmm. we didn't want any junctions but it's hard to pick a route if we had a crescent without junctions, that'd be good for this mm -hmm. lesson yeah but, you know, it is what it They're is. They're hard this to find the old presents without any junctions, aren't they? And it definitely won't hurt me having to deal with... Because each T-junction will be treated like a, a stop. Yeah. You know, we won't treat them as giveaways. Well, talk them in and say we're going to stop. So, you know, and we'll talk about what the hands and the feet are doing. Mm -hmm. And um, get them to do it, so to speak. But, yeah, we're, that's, that's a new, we're going into a new chapter there. But just reviewing what what we did, mm -hmm. and 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 then so you can compare. You yeah. Can think, okay. So um, you can use that time on your demo drive to actually to, to really like engage, show cause, them. Because when I get them in here, I can now just do the cockpit drill. Yeah. The controls are pretty much done. You they? have done. I Saved a lot it. of time. I did it. I didn't go into POM and move enough. I just so I don't want to overload, but I just want to tell you what the, what you're going to be doing, what pedals are what. Mm -hmm. Now there's more detail like what the gas pedal does exactly and how the brakes work, that it works on all four wheels and this is just the back. And there's I mean, it more has quite detail. a lot there, but it's like, oh, they're thinking bore off, I want to start driving. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to <laughs> front load them. So I'm just going to give them enough, but they will learn in due course that you know that when we touch the brakes the brake lights come on and all of these all the details got to be in there but to, 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 what they want to do is get driving mm -hmm. and give them what they need just for enough so i'd probably only go through gears in gear one move off stop gear one move off stop gear one yeah then it'd be like oh now we're going to get second gear so now we're going to talk about the second gear and palming okay as as it's needed yeah so just to, you know just to avoid front loading them just say right just try and do it as for you're the going next 15 minutes this is what you need to know okay. right and have a go do it great now the next 15 minutes you're going to need to know how to do some steering and gear changes so we're going to give you that so okay. it, can do, it could be just controlled based on your route and what's coming next okay yeah so the bend's coming good. next or we, do you know what we better talk about steering but if I've done it on the drive, then it's the lion's share of my explanation and demonstration is done. Yeah. I so think personally, I mean, that's the best way. I mean, Sarah done hers. I mean, all driving instructors can have different ways of doing, aren't they? Hers was like a sitting sort of demo sort of thing. Um, but I think that way is going to be much more, you know, you need to be able to show them yourself rather than just talking about it. Because it's just quicker, it's just easier, it gets the message across easier as well. Yeah. yeah. So, like I say, a lot of the groundwork's done. So I got you changing gears, but then I'm saying, but wait, you know, look, you're you're allowed to look at that, but look at me, look where I'm looking. I ain't. Yeah. So it's all in a lot of the essential stuff is just in that demo, and um, like having a good steering, bad steering, 
what are you going to do? Oh yeah, kids stay in the calls. So yeah. hopefully you're already sold on doing full push, and you're like, yeah, no, and you'll you'll be like, you'll buy into that when you got to do. Like, oh yeah, I don't want to do what you did. That's really bad. Then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's I don't what they look do. Yeah, that is what that is the future. That's what they're going to do. They will do that. So you're preventing it before we even get there. Get there, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so that's that with just with the the cockpit drill part. All I would do there is just introduce the DTRAP SM first and say, look, we're gonna go through the cockpit drill mm -hmm. to help us remember it all. We're gonna break it down into body bar, door, yeah, SSSM, right, got it, and then get into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we just went into it. We're just like, oh, we're going to do doors. And only at the end, I went, oh, that's a lot to remember. And yeah. And you went, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, now, that's what I needed to know that. Do I needed that subject that. introduced. Yeah, okay. So think of each topic, cockpit drill, controls, POM, as like a, a new chapter. And you introduce it. This we're now going to do the cockpit drill. The yep. overview is it's going to be da 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 da, and now we're going to get into it. Okay. And then I'm like, at the end, then you can say, right, so good, done all that. So how when you did a cop how are you going to remember it? And I'm going, oh, well, I used the the triple S M. Okay. And um, why are you doing the mirrors last? Um, oh yeah, because we're right. just to make sure, got it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, I get that. I said, right, now we're going to move on to the controls or moving off and we're going to break that down into POM and yeah that kind of okay stuff yeah all right then yeah so 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 should we did you want to have a go at doing the POM bit get to get me <laughs> I want to see how you do <laughs> all right <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah okay well to do this should I feel we... like I'm running out of time so I want to see how you do it and just like well, learn let's... that sort of well, let's, let's swap. You become the pupil. Okay. I become the instructor. Mm -hmm. And you just, you don't know how to drive. And I'll move you up and stop you up here and then okay. we'll be done. Yep, cool. All right, cool. Make sure you check the last one. You <laughs> and your dad's rage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so what we do, what you you do your cockpit drill like you've done all that, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do my briefing on pom moving off and stopping, then we'll do one. Okay. are actually all good. Very good. Cool. So, just, just we've done the cockpit drill. I've been rolled, so yeah. I'm just recapping now. So we've done the cockpit drill, we've done enter and X in the vehicle, all good. Any questions so far? Nope. No. And we went through the controls when I drove. Yep. And we've explained the biting point. Yep. And now before we go anywhere, we're just going to have a go at doing the bite point. Because okay. we've set ourselves a challenge, we're not going to stall a day, so we can stall. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's just have a go before we talk about moving off and stopping it. Just now you're in the driving seat, just have a little feel because I, I demonstrated should it. I, now what, what, you just, to should I switch it on and do it so that before way? Before you do that, there's two checks you've got to make before you turn that key. Can you remember right. what they are? Oh yeah, I need to make sure this is in neutral and that my handbrake's on. That's it. And best practice we handbrake neutral. Yeah. Harry before Gary. Okay. Oh wait, that's why. You really should write this down. <laughs> okay. So Harry before Gary, yeah. I remember it. <laughs> yeah, and then um so now we turn the key forwards one click and you'll get oh we've already got ignition. Yeah, yeah. we already got to tap it because I left it on. And now if you try and turn the key one more, you're gonna get a message. 
Okay. So he, you're safe to do it because you are in neutral, so you're going to clutch down, turn key. And you can bring that clutch up, but every time, even if you're getting gear or not, always slowly up. This okay. muscle, it's like muscle memory. You can go quick down with the clutch, always slow. Because one day you'll leave it in your, like, you're not the windscreen or something. Yeah, it's so, that um, way. Okay. so good. Okay, so now we're going to get into the bike points. Just probably clutch to the floor all the way down. Yep. And now uh, you can look at the gear stick on this occasion towards me and up towards gear one. Okay. And now you're going to be feeling it. So you're going to slowly release the clutch and when you hear, just like you did before, when you hear the note the end change, there, keep your foot still. Okay. And push it down and you can feel that's stopped and now just come back to the bike and clutch down and just come back to the bike and then when you get there, as soon as you feel that bike you keep your foot really still. Okay. So you, that's why we have to see in position and comfortable with the bend in the knees so you can do that for a long period of time. You can just hold it dead steady. Right, so, okay. So clutch down and neutral. And clutch down back into there, okay. So at this point, before we get into it, do you need to adjust your seat? Are you happy? Because now you've had a go, you might think, do you know what? It's like trying on a pair of shoes. You might think, oh, they feel all right. Then you have a little walk around and you think, actually, they're not. And you might need a to adjust. No, I think that's all right. all right. Yeah. Okay. So if we do get going and you feel uncomfortable, say, because we'll pull up and we'll adjust your seat. Because it's really hard to get it right the first time. Okay. You know, as a driver, I, I you know, I think, oh, I, I <laughs> move it. You know, I think, all oh, right, that's right. So it's quite a personal thing. And you just, most importantly, you feel comfortable. Because if you're not, you'll be stalled in and unsmooth the clutch. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to talk you through moving off and stopping. So, because I'm just talking for about five minutes. So, because with the engine's on there, we just need to turn that off. Because we shouldn't idle the engine while we're just waiting. Because, what do you know why we shouldn't just leave the engine running while we're talking? Because it's going to, because of fumes, pollution. Yeah. So, eco friendly and all that. Eco warriors. So, we're going to go through a little system now for moving off and we're going to use the letters POM, P-O-M. Okay. We're going to go prepare, observe, move. Right. I might use a visual aid for this, but I'm not going to bother. So, um, so when we prepare, it's a bit like a, a sprinter on a, going on a race. Every limb is ready, their hands are ready, their feet are ready, they're ready to go. So that's what we do when we're driving. So what you'd be doing, you don't need to do this now, you'd put your clutch down first gear and your left foot would get the bite point. So left foot's ready. Yeah. Your right foot would cover gas and that's ready. When we move off we might set it a bit but just for today because we're going to be moving off at slow speed we'll just get you to cover. Okay. okay? So, so I won't feet. press down on it, I'll just cover it. Yeah. No, unless we're, we're, we're get, what we'd get you moving and then we're Bring in the gas. Okay. Just less to coordinate, but going forwards, when you get more experience, you will need to set it because you'll want to get off at speed so you don't slow people down. Okay. Okay. So um, so that'll be your feet, your hands, left hand wheel and handbrake, ready to release that, and that could be tricky to release. So let's just have a go at doing that. So all I want you to do with your right foot, just press the brake, and see if you can release that handbrake. Magic, and then put okay. it back on. That's it. So it's worth just doing that because sometimes people struggle. They don't pull it up. Yeah, my mum they, does sometimes. Like, Dad's pull it on they're too on the high. Bike and then they're fighting and having a fight with a handbrake and the clutch comes up and they're stalling it. And we don't want to do that. No. We're not going to stall today. So you, you're happy with the handbrake and yeah. how that works. So that's where your left hand will be and your right hand will be on the steering wheel. So your feet are ready, your hands are ready. You are prepared. Okay, so it's going to be like this. That's it like you're yeah. ready to go right. the clutch is on the bike the foot's on the gas hand on handbrake you can even put it up and press the button in to be really really ready, ready. you know okay. and then you're set next thing is the observations so um i briefly demonstrated when i moved off so where if you were going to move off from here where would you look well, where would you need to be looking well, i know i need to check mirrors yeah because my mum told me yeah. I'm gonna have to look ahead to see where I'm going. Yeah. And 
probably maybe look in this mirror, maybe check behind me as well. So, so we already talked about that mirror not, doesn't see the Volkswagen. Yep. So they could be reversing or driving out or a pedestrian could be there, super blind spot. Yep. So initially what you do with your observation, I break it into two phases. You want to look ahead, centre mirror, right mirror, to look to see if there's a safe gap. Okay. So if you look ahead and in your centre right mirror, is there a safe gap? Well, there is at the minute. There is at the minute. Yeah. So if there is... Now there isn't. At that point, and then it changes. So we're doing, oh, I'll wait for them. Yeah. And then after that, is there a safe gap? Yes. Okay, at that point, we're going to do a six-point check. Just to make sure no little kiddies on bikes are going around their car or pedestrians or people coming out of driveways. So we check. The six-point check starts on the left shoulder over to that driveway. Two in the mirror, down the footpath. Ahead again. Three again. Sorry, ahead, three, four in the mirror, five in the right mirror, then finally right blind spot. Okay. That's your observations. And at that point, I will say, is it still safe? And if you say yes, we move on to M, which is the move. And then it's really important the handbrake goes off first. Okay. And then the clutch will come up slowly, 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 right, slowly. Okay. And at that point, you could put a little bit of gas in. But we'll keep it simple. We'll just get the clutch up without the gas because we're going to move off with nothing behind us, okay? Okay. And then we're bringing the gas once we're moving, once the clutch is up. Because right. I don't want you to go shooting off, basically. Mm -hmm. but I don't trust you. <laughs> but um, it's just the control thing. So that's, that's the system, prepare, observe, move. And then I'd love to just be able to get you to do that, but I'd need to talk you through how to stop. So I'm going to give you another little briefing now on how to stop. So you're getting two briefings and then we'll go and do it. Okay. So stopping the car or pulling up. Pulling up on the left is what I'm going to say. So I'm going to get you to pull up on the left. So let's identify somewhere safe to pull up on the left. Where would you... Um, maybe by that first lamppost. That first one? Yeah. Just the one opposite the junction? Uh, oh yeah, so that's not a good place, is it? Why is that not a good place? Because it might be in the way of cars and stuff coming out. That's it. So when we're pulling up, well, when we pull up, we think about safe, legal, convenient. Okay. So we'll avoid near junctions because of the reasons you just said. Okay. Where else would be a bad place to pull up? Um, Where would we want to pull up? Bus stops. Bus stop. That would be illegal, wouldn't it? Yeah. Inconvenient. Um, crossings. I suppose I can't stop on crossings or pull up near crossings. What level crossings? <laughs> <laughs> Zebra ones, I was thinking. Zebra, yeah, and level crossings. Don't don't park don't park on a level crossing, will you? <laughs> um, so yeah, bus stops, crossings, people's driveways, people's driveways. Would you pull up? A lot of people pull up on the on the path and on the grass. Would you do that, or would you stay on the road? No, because isn't pavements for people on the roads of cars? That's it. There's no reason for us to be on that footpath or the grass. So we're going to have to position ourselves close to the curb. So how are we going to do that without hitting the curbs like they nearly did? Yeah. How are we going to do that, do you think? So I'm going to need to steer over yeah. um, and then just look and make sure that I'm kind of steer back before I hit the curb. So we could give you a little reference point to guide you in. Because okay. sitting on that side of the car might feel a bit weird, a bit different. Yeah. So if this, where we are now is a decent parking position. We're about that far from the, the curb. Okay. A bit less than a drain roof cover. So if you look at the curb in front of the car, where does that sort of intersect on your dashboard? So really my windscreen wiper there is in line. Yeah. I'd say it's on the curb. So you could use that as a guide, couldn't you? I could, yeah. Because if we end up in a position like this when we park, we've done a good then job. it's fine. If you look in that mirror, when you've stopped, you can just see what the gap looks like. So does that look close in that mirror? Yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of looks like this. We know we've, we're reasonably close to the curb. But you don't want to be staring in that way still because you might run, run over some little kitty or something. So if we look ahead, and you can use your little reference point to guide you in. Okay. And we're going to pull up somewhere safely convenient so what we'll do we're actually going to get much further up we get parked there's a junction on the right and then on the left see where that white van is up parked on the footpath yeah we're going to go past that 
I or can... maybe just wide. I decide when we get near. It depends what's happening. Okay. But that's about how far we're going to go. And we're just going to use first gear for it. All right. Okay. okay. And like I say, if anything happens in between there, where I need to help, I will be helping you verbally. But if I need to physically take control, I can. Okay. If I need to come in and steer, I do that just so we don't hit something like a car person. <laughs> Stuff. Hopefully that won't don't happen. Don't either. No. No. Okay. So um. So once we're going along, we're going to go through MSM Mirror Signal Maneuver. Okay. And we're going to pull up, and I'll be talking you through this as well. I'll right. Be talking okay. through everything. So mirrors, we're going to check center and left mirror. Okay. Then we're going to put a left signal. Just just trying to try putting a left signal on for us. That's it. And then you just cancel that. So we're going to mirror signal, and then. It's all about what your hands and your feet are going to do. So then your right foot will cover the brake. So if you just cover the brake, but don't press it. Okay. Left foot will cover the clutch, yeah. but don't press it. At that point, we're de-accelerating, we're in control. You're going to steer towards your reference point. Okay. Engine braking would have taken all that speed off by now. And then we're going to put the clutch down. Clutch down. And then just dab the brakes. And then just dab, just slightly. Just a millimetre. Okay. Then another millimetre, then another till we stop. Just like you're doing there, then we stop. Okay. Once we stop, keep your feet still, handbrake neutral, cancel the signal, then you relax your feet. Right, okay. Okay. That's a lot to remember. That is a lot to remember. That's why I want to help you. Okay. You don't have to take notes. You don't need to, <laughs> I'm going to help you with this. So, are you ready to give it a go? Yeah, I think so. All right. So, I'm going to start the engine. Yeah. So, before we start the engine, do your safety checks. Um, so I can see that that bit's clear. Oh. That's it. So engine start, we're in neutral so you can bring the clutch up. You don't need to worry about okay. it still. Okay, yep. So I want to talk you through prepare. Mm -hmm. So you left foot clutch down to the floor. Okay. Into first gear. Okay. Right foot, just cover the gas, which you're doing. Left foot, find the bite point and then keep your feet still. Perfect. Keep them feet still. Left hand on the handbrake, right hand on the steering wheel. You are prepared. Observations, look ahead, centre mirror, right mirror. Is it safe? It is, Also, yeah. check this left mirror, because we've got that junk somewhere. You might see something yeah. just waiting there. Okay. So we'll check all the mirrors. Yep. Is it safe? It is safe. If it's safe, do your six point check. Okay. Yep, it's safe. Is it still safe? It is, Just yep. have another look, and if it is safe, release the handbrake. So go round again. Yep. From left to right. Safe. Still safe? Yep. Okay. Handbrake goes off, clutch comes up slowly. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And by now, the clutch should be fully up. Okay. Check your centre mirror and right mirror. Is anything behind us? No. Nope. If it's safe, just squeeze the gas. Okay. Beautiful. That's enough, that's all you need to do. We're just gonna stay about this sort of speed, about 10, 15 in first gear. We're gonna introduce gear change a little bit later too. Okay. Just keep it nice and simple to start with. Okay, so you can squeeze the gas a little bit more. And then if you ease off the gas, you'll feel that de-acceleration. Yeah. Anything behind? Nope. So we're doing good. Check this junction. We've got priority here, so we're just going to keep going through. And we are going to go past the van. Okay. okay. So we're going to check the centre mirror. We're going to check the right mirror. And we're just going to steer out. That's enough. Until we go around. We've still got no one behind, so we might even continue a little bit further up. Okay. To see where the, the van is. Yeah. The raw mail van. Yeah. We're not going to put up before it because there's a bus stop. So we're going to go past him, and the reason we're going past him is because again we've got nothing behind, so we're just going to keep you, keep okay. you going. Just be mindful of this side because if he does come out, I will jump on the pedals. I won't expect you to do do that. So that's good. So now where I wanted to pull up is there's a car reversing out, so we're going to go beyond that. Right. Okay. In fact, what I want to do just ease off the gas. Okay. Mirror, mirror, signal. Just. Cover the brake, cover the clutch. Pop your clutch down and we're rolling before the car. So I'm gonna put my hand up to them so we've seen them and then just dab your brakes there. Keep your feet still, 
handbrake, neutral, cancel signal, and relax your feet. We're all done. Okay. As we come further, a bit of had to sort of, you know, where I wanted to pull up, there was a Royal Mail van and there was something else and then there was someone reversing. Yep. But here we are, we got in and let's just sort of look at where you've stopped. So we talked about using your reference points getting close to the curb. How do you feel you've done? I think I've done pretty good. How, how does it look in that mirror? If you had to About say, the same as what it was before. It's perfect. So that works. Right? So you've used your reference point. Lovely. And is it safe, legal, convenient? Bear uh, in mind, I put you here. It was my decision to put you here. I don't think... It's I think because we've got a junction behind, maybe that one there, if we could have stopped a bit further down, we, we should have done if we could have. Yeah, I agree. We got well, I think we're within 10 metres of a junction behind us. Mm -hmm. So we're a bit of an obstruction. But we did that because the BMW was half out of their driveway. And yeah. I didn't want you to speed It would up, have so been more inconvenient for them if we had pulled up right next to them there, wouldn't it? So. Yeah, exactly. So... um. We're only going to be here a little while and then we're going to move off and stop again. Okay. So, um, right. I'll come out wrong. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so then it would be like the next attempt would be, right, do you agree what's going to happen? Do you want another talk through? Mm -hmm. Most people were like, yeah, three or four full talk throughs. Yep. Um, move off, stop, move off, stop. Then it, then after that, it's saying, well, do you reckon you could do that on your own? Mm -hmm. Go on in. And they would, they'd do it. And if you know, and then it'd be right, right now we've done that, so we've moved up and stopped in first gear on your own. What should we do next? Should we add some? We're gonna have to steer, or we're gonna have to put a second gear in, or something. Yeah, okay. so just because that, that, that you said that was a lot, that is a lot. Yeah, you had two briefings moving up and stuff, yeah, and then we've got to do it. Would I want to put in palming and gear changes and no. steering? <laughs> Ooh, so that's why I was that side of the road. So we've got a nice long yep. straight to do a few of these yep. before I have to do anything like that, it's just to get you up to speed, so to speak. So yeah, so yeah, that's it. Okay. So should we um should we head back to Yes. Okay, did you want to drive bad or did you want to swap and drive um, Amazing. Well, you know the way. <laughs> do you want to drive? <laughs> so because we're going to get out and the engine's running, because it just stopped, start, just fired in, I would have to insist that we're getting out. The engine's got, got to go off. Yeah. Quite often people just jump out. Just jump out on the site, actually. Mm. So, yeah. So we're, we're not in roll or anything like that. Okay, that was good. That was really useful. Cheers.